on today's edition of Fit Happens, we'll be going into the gym to do some cardio. Then we'll be having some food with a healthy snack in the kitchen and doing a class in aerobics. Hello and welcome to Fit Happens. This is the show where we hope to inspire and motivate you to increase your fitness levels and decrease your fatness levels. My name is Chris Saremba from Fitness Over 50 and I'm joined by Keith Cormican. Keith, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. Now, <laughs> tell me a little bit about your, your fitness story. My fitness story, is, um, it's, it basically it's a long journey that I've taken here. I started off, I had an acting background. Um, uh, I went to college, I went to three year drama school and I got involved in theatre work. I worked at the Old Vic, I worked with some big names, like the Old Vic, Kevin Spacey and a few other guys. But I fell out of love with acting. Long story short, I went out on a lot of auditions and I went out on an audition for uh, a, a magazine, a men's health magazine, and I found that I actually got the gig, I got the job. So after I got that job, I got more into fitness related um, adverts and commercials. So then like one thing led to another and then I, I got my qualifications as a, as a nutritionist, a certified nutritionist, and I started getting some, I pick, picked up a few clients along the way as a nutritionist. And as I said, one thing led to another and I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the whole process of working with people, changing their physique if they wanted to gain weight, to gain muscle, or if they wanted to lose weight, to lose body fat. And, but I mean, I still, I, I would always keep up and I, as you can probably see a couple of the adverts that I did. I did a, a couple of health chains where I, I just literally always the face on a billboard and that actually grows your, so this was one that I did for a... All oh, right, I, yeah, I recognise that advert, yeah. Yeah, quite, quite a well-known chain of uh, health clubs. This was a long time ago, as you can see, a baby face then. I was a, uh, it's about a good 10, 15 years ago. So I do, I keep up with uh, my article writing, as you can, you can probably see, and, and I, I write for different magazines, and I actually, I, I put the face to it as well, so I practice what I preach. Like, you, got the, you haven't got the face, so you've got the face and the abs there, I think, to it. Well, maybe you haven't got the face for it, but it's some... <laughs> <laughs> got the abs for it, anyway. Well, I'm not a massive guy, I'm not, I, but I've always had abs, which is one of the benefits of like doing a lot of cycling, a lot of uh, it, the nutrition does come down to that. I always say that abs are built, the, right, they're built in the gym, but they're made in the kitchen. It's 70% right. diet, and it's what you put into your system that's going to get abs. So, one, as I say, a long story I'm trying to cut short. I do a lot of writing for magazines. I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training with people, nutrition-wise, and the articles help that, and to put my face towards it as well, and abs towards it as well, always helps. Keith, that's great. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Time for a question, and we're off to the estate agents to meet Matthew, a very busy man. My question is, I'm very busy at work and I don't have much time. What exercise can I do? Well, I, I think it's all about a question of priorities. Um, most people spend a lot of time doing things that perhaps they could substitute with some exercise. Um, I read somewhere that the average British person spends four hours a day watching TV. So you could perhaps lose some of that to, towards exercise. Um, if you exercise just a small amount, just say half an hour a day, that's only, if my mental math is correct, about 2% of the day. So if you can't afford 2% of the day into doing exercise, then, then I'm, I'm sure you can if you try very, very hard. But if you can't, if you're like Matthew, a very, very busy guy, haven't got time to do that, just try and get exercise into your life by moving more in your daily life. So rather than driving somewhere, if it's fairly local, walk somewhere or, or cycle. And if you're going to walk somewhere, uh, walk more quickly. If you walk 30% more quickly, uh, than you normally would, you're going to burn 30% more calories and by burning 30% more calories you're going to attack some fat and build up some fitness levels. And also of course by walking more quickly you're going to get to where you're going a bit quicker. So there's actually no downside at all in, in walking more quickly. So, so if you've really got no time for exercise then just get into your daily life by walking to places, cycling to places and do all that kind of thing a bit more quickly. Hi everyone and welcome to the Fit Happens Gym. I'm joined today by Manoj Kekar. Manoj, hi, welcome. Thank you. And today we're going to talk a little bit about aerobic mm -hmm. or cardiovascular exercise. Mm -hmm. um, I know this is something you do yourself anyway, mm -hmm. so perhaps we can start by you telling me what is your standard aerobic or cardiovascular routine. Mm -hmm. Well, I do two things. One is I'm a member of a, a walking club, so I go away probably about once a month right. to do a bit of fell walking. And the other yep. thing, which is, I don't know if this counts, I sort of cycle uh, on a folding bike to work, so about right. 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening, but I don't think it's sort of uh, particularly uh, 
raises my pulse oh, no, or anything, that's important. I mean, but I mean they're, they're great activities. I mean, hill walking, fair walking is fantastic. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a long distance event, a long duration event. Mm -hmm. Won't raise your pulse rate up by very much. Uh, for most people, when they're looking at looking at cardiovascular exercise or, or cardiorespiratory exercise, are looking to raise their pulse perhaps by a little bit more than you're doing your fell walking. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know, if you're looking down a massive great drop-off, maybe mm -hmm. pulse is high then, I don't know. Um, and the same thing with your cycling to and from work, you're saying that's a fairly, fairly low, low Yeah, speed. fairly low intensity, I would say. I don't, I don't feel exhausted or like I've sort of, no, sort of pushed myself at all. It's more but more. even so, you've probably accelerated the heart rate a bit, which has moved mm -hmm. yourself into, into what's known as the, as the fat-burning mm -hmm. zone. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why people do cardiovascular or cardiorespiratory activity, typically not using fell walking, and sometimes mm -hmm. cycling to and from work is, is, is something they do, but mm -hmm. often in a gym they use some of this kind of kit we've got here. Mm -hmm. So treadmills, um, rowing machines, Stairmasters, there's some cross trainers as well. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a whole range of different cardiovascular or cardiorespiratory are they, are they all equivalent so and if you use one does that can you does it meet your requirements or do you have to sort of use a variety of oh no they're, of they're all very different i mean some okay. of them some of them burn more calories per hour which is a good way of, of differentiating okay. them one that involves going up and down stairs is usually the one that burns, burns the most mm -hmm. calories per hour i, I guess the, the, the typical one that people most think of is a, is a treadmill mm -hmm. or, or a running machine um, and that burns a, a healthy level of calories per hour, but some people don't find it very helpful because it, it can be quite painful on the knees. Mm -hmm. It can be quite a, a high impact activity, so mm -hmm. not everybody goes for that. Um, a favorite for a lot of people is the cross trainer. Mm -hmm. And the cross trainer is the one where the, your arms are moving as well as your legs are moving in, a, in an elliptical fashion. Okay. And this is a good exercise for uh, raising the heart rate, therefore burning the more calories, mm -hmm. and also not being particularly high impact on the knees. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. one of the ones I recommend to, to some of my new trainees. Okay, and you mentioned, I think, sort of the word heart rate came up yeah. quite often in your uh, dis sort of discussion. What, what's the importance of the heart rate? Well, the whole exercise, this type of exercise is called cardiovascular. Mm -hmm. Cardio is to do with the heart, okay. vascular is to do with the blood. Mm -hmm. I actually prefer the term cardiorespiratory because to me, vascular, which is the blood, is to do with the heart anyway. So mm -hmm. uh, cardiorespiratory is better because it's to do with breathing as well. Okay. So the whole area of cardiorespiratory or cardiovascular is, is all to do with heart rates. Mm -hmm. um, and for most people, they have uh, some idea of what their maximum heart rate is. And there's a whole series of bands of different levels that your heart rate needs to be in performing different functions within within the body. Mm -hmm. um, at a medium intensity, that's typically a fat burn level. So that's okay. where the body is providing most of the fuel from your for your activity from its fat reserves. Okay. As you go into to harder and harder activities, then the percentage of the amount of you f fuel from fat goes down okay. as the percentage goes up from muscle reserves, muscle glycogen. Okay. And just uh, just pick up on the point you mentioned, so obviously, again, emphasis on heart rate. So you see a lot of people I think there's on the machines they tend to have measures and also now some people have these sort of monitors what's your yeah. view are they important to, to actually pay attention to what they're showing you when you or can you just base it on how you feel into you know perception of intensity yeah there's multiple ways of doing it right. there's a well-known scale called the the borg scale okay. which is and it's to do, to do with the rate of perceived exertion so mm -hmm. people know how much they should be uh, how, how, how they're feeling by their amount of exertion. Mm -hmm. um, heart rate monitors are great. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got one of the latest ones myself that uses a, a laser technology, okay. which is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. But you can also perceive exertion as well. And the area where you start burning a higher percentage of, of, of muscle and, and, and muscle mm -hmm. glycogen rather than fat mm -hmm. is usually when you start getting slightly out of breath. Mm -hmm. If you think bef up until that level, we call it the aerobic zone, i.e. with oxygen. Above that becomes anaerobic, mm -hmm. which is without oxygen. And although it doesn't actually mean the same, it doesn't mean out of breath, but you can use that as a rough guide. If you're mm -hmm. starting to be out of breath, you can't talk in complete sentences easily, mm -hmm. then you're moving into that anaerobic okay. zone. And if you want to keep in the fat burning zone, you probably should ease off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that give you some good points? Yeah, that's no, very good, yeah. So, Great. Thank you. Well, I think it's probably about time we uh, had to stop talking and had to go at some of these. Yeah. So um, I'll see you later once we've finished on our cardio workout. We're off to the uh, gym reception area now to have a question from Simon. My question to you is, should I or should I not be drinking protein shakes? Well, interesting question there from Simon. Uh, protein shakes, lots of people think they're great, lots of people think they're bad. I think that they're great for the right person and in the right time. Um, protein is a, is, a, is a great thing to eat. It's, it's the most important macronutrient in terms of building the body and maintaining muscle mass. 
um, but not everybody can eat quite as much protein from natural sources uh, as perhaps they uh, they should do for, for optimal results. So I mean, natural sources of protein, of course, are, are meat and fish and eggs, probably the, the big three, I guess. And that's, that's great, and you can have as much meat and fish and eggs as you want to, but probably not as much as you'd need to maintain the optimum amount of protein needed for your muscles. So that's where protein shakes come in. Protein shakes are, generally speaking, more rapidly absorbed into the body than more solid forms of protein. One of the reasons for that is because they're liquid. Liquids get digested and absorbed much more quickly than solids. So protein shakes are great for absorbing protein more rapidly. And for that reason, I would recommend a protein shake to most people straight after a workout. But that's my thought. Let's see if uh, Keith's got any, any other ideas. Keith, what do you think about protein shakes? I agree. I agree with you. And I also would add to that, you have uh, your protein shake with your... I always build a meal from protein first and then work on from there. So then I'm build into the carbohydrates. You can get carbohydrates pretty much anywhere. Um, so I start off with the protein source first. Now, uh, protein shakes for breakfast, it's interesting that you say you have your chocolate protein and you put it into your oats. I do indeed. I have chocolate shake for breakfast as well and I have oats with that. I have them separate though. I don't like the mixture of the taste between the two. So it's just, it's interesting that different people have different tastes for that. Um, but shakes in general? But shake, oh yeah, I recommend shakes. As you said, like it's one of the highest readily available sources of protein after a workout or anything like that. And secondly, the another reason why I would recommend protein shakes, a lot of my clients haven't got time to eat. I haven't got time to eat. Don't give me that, they haven't got time to eat. How long does it take to have your protein shake? Minutes. You yeah. make it up, in the, you shake, put it into a shaker, and it's perfect protein if you can have that. So don't, it, as an excuse, it's easily digestible as well. Um, I like breakfast, I like eggs sometimes, if at, maybe at the weekends for breakfast. Um, it takes longer. It takes right. longer to digest, it takes longer to make, so a protein shake would fit in perfectly with that also. <laughs>
So, Pinterest, I saw your, your meals that you sent to us earlier yeah. on. I saw one of the meals was there was chicken. Yeah. Now, it was also wrapped around, you had some kind of funky ham going yeah. on there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just trying to keep it a little bit exciting every now and It's a bit more of a treat. Yeah. Um, so, stuffed it as well, had mozzarella in it and pesto. Mozzarella? Just normal standard mozzarella? Just low fat. Low fat, yeah. Okay. So, you put that in there. Mm -hmm. um, Wraps it in the ham and oven, baked it. Uh, it's a bit of a treat, it stops it from being a bit plain. Yeah. Um, and chucks it with my favourite sweet potato. Sweet potato, yeah. always a good source Can't of yeah. carbohydrates. Yeah, yeah. What, would you prefer sweet potato over like normal standard potato? Yeah, just because just it's the whole more natural um, source of carbohydrate. All good stuff, so, yeah. yeah. Again, lower GI as well than the exactly. standard spuds. Um, and your other meal that you showed us is there is like a pasta bake. Now, yeah. now, for just out of it, uh, we're going to show you the picture of the of the actual yeah, sure. meal itself. The pasta, I understand, I, I get that. I saw some bits of meat in there. What was the meat? So, uh, chopped up sausage. Sausage. And, uh, yeah, quite fatty. Ideal source of protein. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, uh, sausage is fine. Sausage yeah. is fine. And uh, what was the, the the goo that was on the top? Uh, I believe it was cheese. It was cooked for me by my housemates. Right, right. So, it, so was it wasn't there. your choice of meal. No, it's one of their. Uh, okay. One of their treats. But it was cheese. It was cheese as far as I know, yeah, I think it was a mix of cheese as well. Again, so it's not bad, it's not a bad yeah. meal, good choice, good option. You've got your protein, you've got your hot cold hydrates with yeah, that. Yeah. Standard meal for yeah. day to day. And yeah, yeah, it's it's This is a first for me as well because I've never had it with only a child. <laughs> um, so if I was aware of that, I probably wouldn't have even taken this out, but we'll really to go for it, we'll see, we'll see what it's like. But as I said, late at night, before you go to bed, this is pretty much ideal because yeah. it's going to fuel your body, it's going to keep your muscles going overnight, throughout the night, throughout the system. Do you want to grab a spoon? spoon? Yeah. And uh, we'll go for it, just go for a taste. As you can see guys, if this, if it took a bit longer in the freezer, you'll probably see that it would come out like ice cream and it really is and it's it's just, it's not ice cream, you know, it's, it is pretty much spot on. Uh, so give it a go, just give just it a taste, see, yeah, see what you think. But uh, listen, that's quick, simple and easy. Anyone could do it, like, like perfect late night snack before you go to bed and even throw some almond butter or some peanut butter into that as well, into the yeah. mix. Maybe next time try it without the, uh, the onion and chive because I can, <laughs> I can actually smell the onion and chive more than I can smell the protein. Yeah. But it's going to be good for your system. It's so listen, bad. Rob, That's thank all. you very much. Thanks for Cheers, joining man. us again uh, on Fit Happens Kitchen. Hi, well my next guest is Julie Wise and Julie is an instructor for various classes at uh, local gyms. Julie, welcome. Hello. So uh, you, you teach a number of different classes, I think there's Body Combat, Body Jam and Zumba, is that the that's, full list? That's correct and I, and I cover a variety of other sort of more conditioning classes when I need to. Right, and these are all classes aimed at uh, groups of people, men, men and women or are they Correct, yes, yes I, have, I do have men come to my classes, <laughs> even Zumba, I do have men come to Zumba too. Right, well I've been to Body Combat with you several yes. times so I know, I know it's about, but for those people who don't know what, what Body Combat is, describe Body Combat to me. Okay, so it is... At the end of the day, it's an aerobics class, but it has martial arts feel. So basically, you're kicking and punching in time with music. There's a preset choreography. Uh, it's developed by a company called uh, Les Mills that are based out in New Zealand. And they do a phenomenal job. They pull together great music, great moves. And you could be doing a track where you could be doing, say, karate, um, um, kickboxing, and boxing all in one track. Um, and they just sort of pull it together in a proper choreographed style. Right, so you're mixing together both the karate and the boxing and, yep. and kind of MMA type movements. Correct, yeah, we've got some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in there, oh, right. some ground grappling moves, and <laughs> you know, it's all, it's all interesting. Uh, so, so, not only are the participants listening to great music and moving in time with it and getting a good workout, but they also understand the techniques of uh, some of these martial arts. They're modified, um, but generally speaking, they try to keep it as authentic as they possibly can. All right. And, and Zumba was the first, the, the final thing we mentioned. Mm -hmm. I see the word Zumba everywhere. Every, yeah. gym, every gym seems to have some kind of Zumba yeah. class going on. So Zumba, as, a, as an organisation, have done a phenomenal job with the marketing. And basically, they train their instructors up and give them some music and some choreography and say just go off and and have fun right. um, so there's there is an awful lot of freedom in Zumba so you can get some instructors that do loads of salsa and then other instructors that maybe pick up more modern music and do their own choreography and some pick up choreography that other people have done and so you might go to a class and see choreography that you've done before and there's that right. sort of feeling of um, 
sort of a, almost like a tribe, a Zumba tribe. Right. So um, it, it, it's, it's great. It's a lot of fun um, and I love teaching Zumba because it's, it, you know, anything goes really. Great. So, so thinking about all of those three different types of classes, mm-hmm. how many people do you have at once? Uh, how many of us are in the class at one go? Okay, well, it, it varies. So uh, say body combat, um, you might have 30 to 35 people if it's that's, very that's, full. That's a huge number. It, it is quite a lot of people. I mean, I've been to, I've been to big events where you might have 200 people wow. doing doing combat in a big hall and uh, that's great I mean it's such a lot of fun so in terms of keeping an eye on what the class is doing are you facing the class or are you <laughs> got your back to class so they can actually mirror what you're doing yeah so generally speaking um, all the Les Mills class of so body combat body jam body pump balance all of those uh, you face the participants and they teach you to, to, to teach like that occasionally with something like body jam which is um, quite difficult to explain what you're doing when it's a dance move I might turn around and let people follow me um, but generally speaking, they want you to, to, to face your class, especially if you haven't got mirrors. Yeah. Um, it would be, you know, almost dangerous not being able to see your class. Yeah, exactly. But something like Zumba, they teach you to be the other way, to let your participants follow you. And Zumba is very much more about the visual cues rather than the verbal cues. Right. And that, as a means of getting fit, do you recommend this kind of group class is good for getting fit? Or is, is it something that you should be doing alongside some other kind of fitness training? Okay. Th- There are people that come to classes and just do classes. I am one of those people. And for years I went in the gym and did running and stuff. But once I found the classes, I knew that's where I wanted to be. I love group exercise. I love being with other people and and getting hot and sweaty and, you know, (laughs) having having a bit of fun, you know, with music. There are other people who do both. There's nothing wrong with that. People who like to run, but then they like to come to class and, and, you know, work out to music. And, of course, there are those people that, you know, are more than happy being on their own. My eldest daughter um, loves going to the gym, and every time I suggest, do you want to come to a class, she says, no. (laughs) I like to work out on my own, listen to my own music, and do my own thing. And that's fine. That's fine. She's very motivated. So the great thing about... um, Exercise classes, when you're with other people, you know, you have an extra motivation. Not a competitive necessarily, but it could be a motivation. The music might motivate you or being around with your friends or you feel a little little um, less shy around other people. Some people find it a little bit daunting when they look in the mirror mm-hmm. and see themselves. But I always think that's a positive thing. You can see where your body is and where you're moving and you can pick up sort yeah. of you know, um, problem areas, things that you struggle with or have a bit of difficulty with the technique. And I guess another thing is it's a, a scheduled event because if you're just going to the gym on your own or going out for a run on your own, you, yep. could, you could say to yourself, oh, I don't feel like going today. But of course, if you know that your body combat class is at 10.30 on a Sunday morning, then you will go at 10.30 yeah. on a Sunday morning. plus also you'll have the instructor sending you a message on Facebook saying, saying, saying where, where, where <laughs> are you, you coming this week? <laughs> Yeah. Notice you weren't here last yes. week. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not like that. But it, but there is a um, very much more a community feel. So, just drawing to a conclusion, would you recommend anybody to go and give it a go? I think anybody should go and give it a go. Go and speak to your instructor before before this class starts and say, I'm new, I'm, I'm a little bit unsure. And any decent instructor will just turn around and say, you do what you, you can, I'll only stop you if I think you're doing something dangerous. And if you don't feel that you can do a full hour, tell the instructor you're only going to do 30 minutes, make sure you do some stretching afterwards, and then just keep on coming back and building on that. Right. Julie Wise, thank you very much. And now I'm off to body combat class. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. We're off now to have some healthy protein in the form of some casein shake. Goodbye and thanks for watching.